This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Pretty interesting game to wrap up week number seven in the NFL. We have a banged up San Francisco 49ers team going to Minneapolis to take on the Minnesota Vikings. And we got to decide how much not having Diva Samuel, likely not having Trent Williams downgrades this team. We're going to talk about that today with Ryan Williams picking his brain on this matchup from a spread and total perspective, but also talking player props for Monday night at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am every Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, uh, pretty fun week number seven thus far. How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing I'm doing great, Jim. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun week seven. You know, uh, if you are annoyed about you know the brotherly, what do they call it? the brotherly push and brotherly the tight end yeah. day, tush push, yeah, the- I like tush push. I just I like yeah. the word tush, so tush push, yeah. That's my exactly but- exactly. Oh no, the, bring bring tush back. Hashtag That's right. Bring tush back. Um. <laughs> But yeah, if you get annoyed by all those monikers and stuff, then the best way to go about it is just trying to, you know, go go full on, go full into it, uh, try and try and make the best of it. And that's what we did on tight end day. Uh, shout out to Mark Andrews. Shout out to Travis Kelsey, you know, was making some bets with those guys um, who tend to just ball out uh, when, you know, this this day comes about. Uh, we got another tight end to, to talk about tonight that I'm excited about. But yeah, all in all, a good week seven. Uh, love events get get back to the mix of things i was talking about lamar at the midseason getting mvp odds on him um which looks pretty great just really right now um not sure what's going on with, with the buffalo bills but you know going against the patriots a divisional game, uh josh allen just struck it's a divisional um in the recent you know in the recent two years mm-hmm. here um but yeah we're, we're we're week seven uh we got the 49ers in a bounce back spot on the road against minnesota so a fun monday night game ahead of us and we're gonna talk about that fun tight end i assume you meant josh oliver we'll talk about josh oliver uh in a bit here we'll talk travis kelsey i suppose Absolutely. at some point or uh george Cable <laughs> at some point throughout the day for today so we'll dive into that dive into props for 49ers at vikings and get you ready for that game in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast we're here seven times per week on the covering the spread podcast feed with our daily shows but also uh previews for thursday night and sunday night football via top Vecchio, all right here in the Covering the Spread podcast. So you can also find the daily shows in the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV Plus to get FanDuel TV Plus. Go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in via your FanDuel account to watch for free. Or go to uh, the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-gambler.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y in New York. 
Let's dig in now to this 49ers at Vikings matchup. But right now, the 49ers are six and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 40 is uh, 43. It has gone down to points uh, since the news that Debo Samuel will not play. No Debo here. Likely no Trent Williams. He is doubtful as well. And those are two of the best players on this team. They got a lot of good ones, but Trent Williams definitely up there for sure. So let's talk about those two injuries first, Ryan. How did the losses of Debo Samuel and Trent Williams impact your view of the spread and the total in this game? Yeah, the the spread, it, it impacts it a little bit for me, Jim, just because we know that, you know, these teams with the Minnesota Vikings, you know, they tend to they tend to be close. And, the you know, the one thing the Vikings don't do is kind of just lay down or, or go down without a fight, I should say. Um, and so – just thinking about this offense and the way that, you know, Christian McCaffrey is banged up. We don't have any rushing lines right now uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, for Eli Mitchell uh, and Jason, uh, Jordan Mason. Um, you know, Debo Samuel not being a part of this offense does take out kind of what they want to do, I feel like, when you're talking about scheme-wise. Um, it puts more pressure on Brock Purdy and possibly Christian McCaffrey um, if he's going to be able to, to give it a go tonight. So um, I do like the Minnesota Vikings plus six and a half here, minus 105. Um, I think that's a that's a fair number. Uh, you would love to get to that key number of seven. I just don't think that we will um, get there. Um, even, even with Christian McCaffrey, like fully a go, I just don't think the book would want to do that. Uh, but yeah, seven would be a, a smash number if we somehow get it. I'm actually not too, um, I'm not turned away by the 43 number as well too, for the over. Um, yeah. if we can get some, you know, plays going for, for the Minnesota Vikings, I know that the number, you know, is going to be kept down because we're missing Justin Jefferson. We're missing Debo Samuel. I would want Christian McCaffrey to play, um, taking that over number, but I think there's still some pieces here. Uh, and there's still, you know, there's Kurt Cousins D gaff mode. Like he'll still be able to find, uh, ways to, to get his guys the ball. Um, so uh, as an interesting one for, for point to be scored, um, especially with the way the Vikings defense has been playing, which I believe they have the highest blitz rate of, of any team. So this will be an interesting showing uh, for Brock Purdy as the 49ers look to bounce back after their loss last week. Yeah, it's fun to watch Brian Flores when he knows that his team has no no talent. He's kind of back in like that like uh, <laughs> Dolphins mode when like he took over that like tanking team and like the Vikings defense is pretty devoid of talent. So he's kind of going like, we're just going to like mess with you and see what happens. And I agree with you. The total is very interesting here. I have the over here. Um, I've got the total 46.3. So with it sitting at 43 point now, 43 right now, I think there's value in that. Uh, minus 112 on the over. That That is a, after accounting for the loss of Debo. And I'm assuming Trent Williams will be out as well. So even accounting for those two things, I agree with you, Ryan, where I think the over is very in play here. It would be like, if we had Jefferson, Debo, and Trent Williams in this game, it's probably sniffing around 47 or so. I don't know. That might be an exaggeration. But, like, um, I think we'd, we'd see a much higher total here. So those losses, yeah. we don't want to double count those, which is kind of what you were saying, you know, where even with those guys being accounted for, I think that there is value in the over. So to me, I'm also kind of going into looking at props, Ryan, under the assumption that we'll see a, a bit more scoring than what the books are projecting right now with that total being at just 43. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, and you know, I, like I said, I still think that there's key pieces uh, on both sides, uh, especially on the 49ers side um, to, to be able to push things. And you're looking at the, you know, where the public is at right now. Now public is loving over also loving the 49ers side though, favorably uh, 89% uh, of the bets on the money line. Uh, right around just under 80% of bets on the San Francisco spread, um, which even likes me, uh, which even makes me love the Minnesota spread. Uh, okay, let's dig into some props here for this game and talk about the 49er side. As you mentioned, no rushing props up yet with the question marks around McCaffrey. It sounds like he'll be good to go, um, but they haven't posted any props yet at FanDuel Sports. But let's talk here about the pass catchers uh, because taking Debo Samuel out of the equation does obviously have an impact on Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and all those guys. So when you look at the pass-catching props, Ryan, or other props in the 49ers, any value you see right now, or are those losses already properly accounted for? 
Yeah, and that's it. You know, I, I don't want to go back and make this uh, uh, thing about, you know, tight end week uh, being, you know, a thing or tight end day extending onto Monday night because the day is over. But uh, George Kittle uh, just finds himself in a favorable matchup, you know, w- once again. Uh, tight ends have been, you know, smashing against uh, – against the Minnesota Vikings defense. And it it makes sense, right, from a scheme perspective. You know, if they are going to be blitzing at this explosive rate, you're trying to find that, you know, those security blankets, the guys in the middle of the field. Um, And George Kittle finds himself at that 47 and a half, you know, feels like a reasonable number. Honestly, though, um, I, I think it should be, you know, a little bit closer to to 50 and maybe 52 with uh, Debo being out. Um, you know, you, people are going to look at Ayuk first and foremost, and he's 71 and a half. And I think that that's a reasonable number as well, too, considering explosive play rate uh, for Brandon Ayuk and just how he can get going against this offense. But I do think that the offense today or tonight will start uh, and stop with George Kittle. Um, I love, you know, getting in on his reception props right now. It's three and a half at minus 156. That's a little bit too, too, um, it's not favorable enough for my liking. So let's go to his alt receptions. Uh, if we go up to five there, it's uh, plus 132 on the line. Six receptions is plus 235. And the Vikings defense has given up six receptions to tight ends for uh, multiple weeks now. So um, love love getting action on George Kittle tonight. And I think that that's the right way to approach it too, because he's a pretty volatile guy in terms of his usage. And yeah. he can have days where... There's not a whole lot cooking. Um, Even that game where he had the three touchdowns, he had three receptions or three or four receptions in that game. So like if I'm going at Kittle, I want to go, like you said, and go towards the more upside markets. And that would be like alternate receiving yards, um, looking at touchdown props and looking at these, you know, at the alt reception numbers, five plus receptions. Again, like you said, plus 132. I want to take advantage and benefit from the volatility as opposed to being at the mercy of it. I think that this allows you to better do that. So I agree with you where when looking at Kittle, I want to search in the alternate markets because I know that even with Debo being out, there are still a lot of paths to having a mediocre game. So if I can have that many draw outcomes, I want to account for that. I think these numbers, Ryan, do do that properly. So I agree with you on the approach there with Kittle. Looking at Ayuk, um, his... Uh, receiving yardage, receiving reception prop number is four and a half over is minus 158. So again, you know, heavily juiced towards the over the yardage number 71 and a half. I get why it's there. Uh, he's been an animal so far this year, but that is a lofty, lofty number to be sure. Let's talk about the Vikings side of things here. Uh, second game with no Justin Jefferson. The first one that they'll get to play indoors. Uh, last week, they played in very heavy wind against the Chicago Bears. So might see a more normal version of this offense now with no Jefferson. So any value for you on the Vikings side of things here? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we got we got to go back again. I mean, again, this is just so how how it happens. But TJ Hawkinson is the best receiver uh, for the Minnesota Vikings, you know, right now with without uh, Justin Jefferson. And we saw that last week, you know, even with the win, Kirk Cousins trying to find TJ Hawkinson it, it, as much as he can uh, against this Bears defense. Forty nine and a half. Again, that's that's a reasonable number. Um, I think that this is one where I'd be tending um, to, to to take the over, especially like if we if we get Christian McCaffrey in this game and we kind of talk about, you know, maybe the 49ers, they're controlling this game in, in the first half, you know, and and um, they the Vikings need to, you know, throw in the second half to kind of get back into it. Love Hawkinson there. Uh, love KJ Osborne as well. Forty one and a half is where he's coming in at. And this has just been a guy who's he's been in this offense um, for for some time. People will look at Jordan Addison, the rookie, and I, you know, love that Kirk is trying to get him going. But I think KJ Osborne is just this guy who's kind of been around here for for a while with Minnesota, and I feel like him and Kirk Cousins have like a good rapport and understanding, especially when it comes to like third down conversions and just needing to make a big play. KJ Osborne seems to always be in the mix, even if you think that the the path. Um, for you know the the Vikings to cover is for them to get out to an early lead. I still like the passing options here. The run game has just not been able to get going with Alexander Madison and Cam Akers coming to the squad, and so I, it's hard to be able to trust the running back situation right now. There, Alexander Madison is the only one who we have props for uh, at this current juncture. I don't know how you can put any hard earned dollars on on Cam Akers um, <laughs> at this point in time, but you know uh, this this is one 
one of those things. Like, especially if we're expecting points in this game, we got to be looking at avenues uh, on, on the way to get there. So TJ Hawkinson and KJ Osborne are the two that stand out for me. So here's my pitch for Addison. If I were to try to sell you on him, uh, his yeah. number is 15 and a half. And that's a big number for sure, especially for a guy who hasn't, you know, played a feature role so far this year. But Addison, Addison gets a lot of downfield work. Uh, looking overall this year, counting the games where Jefferson has played, 24% deep target share for Addison. He's actually been pretty effective on those downfield targets as well. Uh, overall target share for Addison this year is 15%. But again, you take Jefferson out of the equation. I think we'll see more downfield work for Addison once again. And the way you attack the 49ers is on the outside. So you do not want to live in the middle and deal with the insane yeah. linebacker play they've got. It's a black hole in the middle of the field when you, when you face them. So I think that like from a matchup perspective, it actually does line up pretty well for Addison, which is why he's the first guy who caught my attention. Now, maybe I don't want to go with the traditional market of 50 and a half for receiving yards uh, for Addison, but, Looking at the alt market here, uh, to get 60 plus yards is plus 130, 70 plus yards, uh, plus 194. I think that that's kind of in play for this one because of the way he Love gets that. used downfield and the way that this matchup aligns. So maybe I'm thinking too much about like matchups here. And maybe I'm, you know, underselling how good the or how difficult it may be the Vikings to like get outside, given that like the pass rush will probably be in their face right away. But like, I think that's where I'm most tempted to go just because I really want those downfield shots that we've seen Addison get, even when Jefferson's been healthy this year. That's at least my pitch for it. If I were trying to sell it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's definitely, um, Kirk cousins has, has relied on him. Uh, even, yeah. even when Jefferson was healthy, um, he's been, he's been given a healthy amount of targets, I believe four touchdowns in, in six games for Jordan Addison. So, um, yeah, we, we love, we love to see it. Speaking of touchdowns, let's talk about those. We both like the over in this game at 43. So could be some value in the touchdown score props. As of right now, Christian McCaffrey is minus 175 to score. Your guy, George Kittle, plus 155. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, plus 230. When you look at the touchdown props, Ryan, any value stand out to you there? Yeah, I mean, Kittle at plus one. Five, you know, I'm going to have some action on. Uh, I do think it's interesting. You know, they kind of have TJ, Jordan, and KJ all, you know, kind of right by each other. Um, 230, 260, and then 360. Um, I probably would go with jo Jordan Addison from that. Getting red zone targets, um, you know, at a plethora. So uh, Jordan Addison for me there is, is what's interesting. On the, uh, on the 49ers side, though, Jawan Jennings at plus 480 is a guy who I'm definitely going to be looking at here. Um, without Debo Samuel being out there, you know, Jawan Jennings in the mix for teams for some time. Like Jawan went, Jawan Jennings has carved out a role on this roster where he's kind of just always been there. And he was at guys that Brock Purdy was working with and had a good rapport with when he came into the mix last year. Um, Brock Purdy, that is. And so, you know, Jawan Jennings, I'm really excited to kind of see him, you know, kind of play in this game and see what he has to offer. I almost score without, you know, a Debo Samuel being out there. I think that that's, uh, that's interesting with the Vikings kind of focused on, okay, don't let Kittle beat us. Don't let, uh, don't let Kittle beat us. Don't let, um, Brandon Ayuk beat us, and Juwan Jennings could find himself on an island out there. Yeah, Juwan Jennings, uh, plus 480, as Ryan mentioned, uh, did see an increased role in that game that Ayuk missed earlier on this year. Only three targets in that game, but did run a good number of routes. I think that's pretty enticing for Juwan Jennings. So if you want a longer shot, I think that I'd agree with Ryan. That that's probably your best outlet would be via Juwan Jennings, plus 480. I'd also mention Brandon Powell, plus 550. I'm not going to take yeah. that myself, but a guy who at least be out there as a longer <laughs> shot, uh, not recommending that, but like um, if you're looking for guys with longer odds who at least be on the field, those are the guys who would check that box. But Jennings, to me, the much, 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 much better option between those two guys at their respective odds. Any final thoughts for you, Ryan, on this game before we close up shop for today? Uh, just because of the way the week's been going for me, I won't be surprised if I get some action on Kittle to score twice. Uh, okay. Plus, uh, 13 to 1 odds there. So, okay. um, you know, let, let's have some, let's have some fun tonight, Jim. Let's have some fun tonight with the, with this game. Uh, Kirk Cousins, you know, two, two and eight, I believe, uh, in his last 10 Monday night starts, uh, yeah, but we're taking Kirk, the points. Yeah. What, could, what could go wrong? Um, yep. it just need him to cover Kirk. Just need you to cover and, uh, we'll be all set.
National Tight End Day has morphed into National Tight End Week here. Uh, hopefully we get George Kittle in the end zone twice for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. But do not worry, because Ryan is back with us once again tomorrow. We'll talk some futures. We'll talk about the lay of the land, maybe some Ravens discussion on the show tomorrow as well. Uh, as I can rub the salt in my wound and my Lions money line ticket from yesterday even a little bit more. Because why not? Let's just do that uh, potentially tomorrow as well. We'll also be here every other day throughout this week. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. Ryan, appreciate having you on. Good luck tonight. Uh, Hopefully your good week continues. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Yeah, good luck to everybody else out there. Cover Kirk. Cover Kirk. We need (laughs) you. Uh, We'll see you next time, Jim. Some espresso for Kirk Cousins before the game tonight to wake him up a little bit. I think that's what we need. Uh, keep keep the dad mode away for at least a little bit longer for sure. You can find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis and on threads at Jim dot Sonis. Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.